So I bought this old handsaw at a yard sale for a dollar, and I thought I'd give a shot at fixing it up. You can see by the pictures that the, the wooden handle has uh, seen better days, and the blade is definitely corroded. The first thing I did was research the saw to make sure it wasn't uh, a valuable antique saw. Uh, you can do this by uh, looking up the medallion online and making sure that it's not something that you don't want to mess with. So to get the handle off the blade, uh, I simply unscrewed the four bolts to hold it together. Sometimes it's easier said than done, but on this particular saw, uh, she came apart really easily. You want to make sure you're using a big enough screwdriver that you don't um, damage the soft brass uh, screws. I carefully punch out the male part of the fasteners out from behind. So here's a close-up of the wood sole handle showing the uh, original varnish finish. Looking over the handle, I noticed there was a small split by one of the screws. I'll take care of that while I refinish the handle. Rather than use a chemical stripper, I just like to use my pocket knife and scrape off the varnish. To me, this is less messy and there's no bad fumes. And here I have glued and clamped that small split I found at the one fastener hole. So here's the wooden handle after I've scraped it uh, with my pocket knife. Here I'm using 100 grit sandpaper to do my first pass of sanding. This will remove whatever little bits of varnish I didn't get with the pocket knife and get the wood relatively smooth. Then I finish sand with 220. This gets the wood really smooth and I try to break any corners while I'm going around the, the piece. I found some imperfections that I want to fill uh, with some homemade uh, wood filler. So I use some sawdust that I collected from my sanding and some wood glue. Made some homemade wood putty. And I'm going to fill the imperfections with this and then resand those areas. So here's the handle completely sanded and ready for a finish. I'm using boiled linseed oil for my finish. Uh, I'm using a brush to fill in the carving on the one side of the handle. Once I fill in that carving, I'm going to use uh, a piece of cotton rag to apply the finish. Uh, I'll let this finish dry 24 hours and apply another coat. I'll repeat that for four coats. Okay, so I'm going to use some fine Scotch-Brite to clean up the brass hardware. The solid brass hardware does clean up nice. I like to use the super fine steel wool to give it a nice polish. Look at that shine. To clean up the medallion, I'm going to start with a brass brush. Try to get in between all the lettering with that. And then I'll go ahead and use the same fine scotch bright and then the super fine steel wool.
the super fine steel wool really gets the brass hardware looking pretty. Once again, look at that shine. To get the worst of the rust off the blade, I like to use a sharpened uh, steel scraper. This saves me loading up my sandpaper uh, with all that rust. Next, I use a 120 grit emery. And as if by magic, as I'm sanding, you can see the uh, etching appear on the blade. Looks like we have a Keystone Challenger saw blade. Once I'm satisfied uh, the corrosion's uh, been removed, I switch to 280 emery just to smooth out the steel of the blade. Although it's probably not necessary, I took some uh, 400 grit wet and dry paper and polished the blade some more to get it even smoother. To give the blade some corrosion resistance, I applied some paste wax. I'm doing this ahead of putting the handle on so that the, the part of the blade that's going to be under the handle is also protected. So here I am uh, reinstalling the handle on the blade. Uh, it's important to get the square uh, part of the hardware into the square hole on the wood uh, handle. You can see me rotating the hardware until it falls into the square hole. I use a rubber mallet to very gently set the hardware into the square holes. That's what, That way when I turn it over, they don't all fall out. That's just a simple matter of uh, screwing it back together. This is not a time to go for 800 foot-pounds of torque. I just try to make the screws tight enough um, that the blade is clamped securely in place. Okay, so I'm far from being an expert on sharpening, but here's what I do. You notice on these saws that the teeth uh, are bent so that every other tooth uh, faces away from you. These are, these are the ones you're going to sharpen. Um, from this side. So this is the, uh, the typical triangular file used to sharpen the blades. Uh, you use a certain file for a certain number of teeth per inch. Usually the file manufacturer will have something on the package about that. I, I try to take off a little bit of metal at a time until I feel like my file is following the uh, appropriate edge. This takes a little bit of experimentation, but you sort of get a feel for it after you do a few of these teeth. You can see the, the sharpened part of the, of the edge is now shiny. And if I don't get the angle right the first pass, I correct on the second pass. Now I flip the saw around, and again I'm going to focus on the, the teeth that are bent away from me. Again, there's no magic here. I'm just filing lightly um, and trying to pick up the edge so that the, the newly shined filed metal seems to match the edge that was on the saw to begin with. The last thing I like to do is take the saw and give it one more coat of uh, paste wax. I'll give the blade one more coat. And I like to put some paste wax on the handle. And the paste wax will also keep that brass uh, staying shiny longer.
So here's the saw before, just as it came from the yard sale. And here's how it looks after I did all my work. She's not restored like brand new, but she's definitely in good enough shape to be uh, put to use around the shop. Thanks for watching.